Okay. So yeah, so my proposal for this uh, blah, it's a little bit different than what I've peddled the last few years. Of course, whoever has seen me here, I peddled more standardization of other resources. Now I'm taking a little segue on this. Uh, this is work done with some of my students. And for those of you who know me, I'm a professor of computer science. I do a lot of hackathons. I've been here four times. Um, my research interests are machine learning in terms of uh, relation to weak supervision. So it's a little bit different than what most of people do here with NLP, annotating things, building models. I, I like to see it a little bit different with weak supervision, meaning using some sort of noisy rules, a lot of data to get to the same point. I've done all of that in, uh, for EHR, and I'm starting to do it with social media because of uh, some other collaborators that, I, uh, that I'm getting, like extracting mobility patterns and networks from uh, tweets and also from dark web. And for those that are a little bit iffy on weak supervision, <clears throat> basically, you know, we all know that getting label training data is expensive. However, you know, using weak supervision, meaning that, you know, you have some sort of lower quality labels that are easy to make, either just using dictionaries or using very basic rules. But, you know, a lot of data with a lot of these rules, you can actually generalize, I mean, get models to generalize better than, you know, very narrow annotations and things. So uh, we can talk about that a lot more later. So in terms of why do we need this uh, social media mining toolkit? Well, like Graciela made the per perfect case, there's a lot of research that's starting to move in this direction. Biomedical, computer science, social sciences, public health, all kinds of different fields are getting into this. Uh, it obviously has to do with the accessibility of the data. It's a lot more accessible to get a bunch of social media data than patient records or genetic data or anything like that. So the problem is that, you know, everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it differently and in their own way. So when I started getting into this space, I usually download hundreds of papers, read all of them, set up a mental model, and then see, you know, what people are doing. Well, I noticed that, you know, everybody's doing it their own way. There's no standard tools. So there's some tools provided by Twitter that access their API. But if you want to scrape something, if you actually want to, you know, get stuff out of the Twitter JSONs or Reddit uh, data, there's not a real standard toolkit anywhere, right? Or you have very isolated tools that like you have some scraping tools, but they only do that. You have not not a lot of tools that are available together. And like we all know, the paper is done. Software is never shared, or if it's shared, it's like this cryptic. Perl script that worked on one, I don't know, Unix computer from the 80s, and that's it, right? Or there's some Python code that it's, I don't even know which version, the code doesn't say that. You try it, it doesn't run, it has some ridiculous dependencies and some files named blah.txt that you'll never find. So it's hard to get all this stuff pieced together. And a cautionary tale, I started by asking some students, so we got a data set that somebody from a different department purchased. It was around 500 gigabytes of tweets. And I told these two students I had, one was a honors student, the other one was a PhD student. I said, okay guys, here's a data set. I wanna extract this type of tweets from them. You go to town, do whatever you have to do. Well, uh, another, uh, actually this example is from the Twitter screen grab, sorry. Uh, first of all, I told people to go and download the data from here. They were like, fine, got, got the data. Two different students got two different sets of fields and all the files that you found there. Oh, weird, okay. Then they also got a vast number of different tweets with requested content. So we were looking for uh, drug-related tweets and they actually got very different numbers, completely different numbers. Why? Well, one person used actual Spacey and some more and OPS tools, the other person just wrote a bunch of regex. So you can see where this is going bad, why? Well, because we got completely different signals on this, right? And this is, this happened in a lab of six people where the students could actually talk to each other, but they didn't. 
imagine what happens when you have all this research going on everywhere in the world with groups that might not like each other, speak different languages. So this is a mess, or at least the way that I, I, I see it. And then, you know, you ended up having two completely different and hard to use code bases. So this guy had a bunch of regex and some bash scripts. The other guy had some nice Python. And again, not great. So what do we propose in this uh, toolkit? So again, we want to have, to begin with, data acquisition tools. So everybody wants to use social media, at least from the requests I get. I get people from public health. Like I said, I get people from other departments saying, oh, I want to use Twitter. I'm like, cool. So where do you download Twitter? I'm like, yeah, it's not really that, right? So in this set of tools, I uh, propose to have you know, Twitter data gathering tool in the sense that you connect the pipeline, get some new data coming in, scraping. I know it's a little bit, a lot of people don't like doing this, but still, if you want to get a lot of historical data of something, you need to do some scraping. As long as you do it all ethically without creating some fake accounts and doing all this nasty stuff. Hydration tool, this is one of the most common. This is actually the only standard way you usually find people sharing research. They share a bunch of tweet IDs, and then you have to hydrate them. That's, I think, the only standard thing about most people's research and what they share. Collection. Oh, you basically get a tweet ID, and then that goes to the Twitter API and fetches a full tweet. Because according to Twitter's uh, rules, you cannot share a full tweet. You can only share the tweet ID. Yes. Hmm? You, you can't share them if it's for research purposes, actually. Yeah. So you can share them for 50,000 of them. There's, there's, there's a lot of, yeah, weird on things like that. And collection as well, I, I have, or at least people want to collect this periodically to see trends and things like that. So these tools are, again, I propose these tools. They sound like, oh, man, this guy's going to be coding 24-7. No, a lot of these tools are partly done. It just needs to be standardized and plugged in. Pre-processing tools, again, extracting from the Twitter JSON, science trivial. It's not trivial for somebody from public health that doesn't have, uh, you know, Python and data science skills. Even parsing Reddit files, yeah, some people know how to parse properly HTML, some don't. You use beautiful soup or you use regex. Again, you know, all these things to standardize and wipe is we want to get the same outputs. And also, we want to provide you know, some sort of standardization to either dictionaries or ontologies. And we want to provide, you know, dictionary generation tools. That's those are easier ways of people finding things in tweets. And we want to have some sort of manual annotation, you know, back end for people to use. So all of this in one single place, so you don't have to be downloading a bunch of different things from different authors. So again, I mentioned this sounds like a lot, but a lot of these components are created. I have my students worked on this. I just need to basically piece stuff together. Also, some of you guys have probably worked on this, have some cool things, some annotators or any other sort of cool tools. Uh, talk to me and I can put them in here instead of reinventing the wheel. That's the whole point. And also talk to people here about, you know, what, do, what would you prefer to be standardized? What would you prefer to see, you know, and how you want it to be done? rather than just a bunch of ad hoc tools that just do things not very standard. So yeah, there you go. So thank you for letting me be here again. And I hope to uh, have some interesting conversations and work on this. Questions, concerns?